This is Channel 3. From the television news leader in central Illinois, the Channel 3 News at 10 with Jerry Slayer, Suzanne Reed, Judy Fraser Weather, and Chris Whitlick Sports. Good evening. Officials of the United Auto Workers Union say a strike is on against Caterpillar Incorporated. Negotiations broke down today in Indianapolis. UAW officials say the strike could happen any time between now and the deadline set for 10 tomorrow night. More now from Rusty Dodd. It was an auspicious start to what turned out to be a disastrous day in talks that never got off ground zero. UAW negotiators settled in and waited 20 minutes for Caterpillar representatives to show up and take their place at the table. Company officials eventually filed in. The federal mediation team was ready to go. It would be the first and last face-to-face -face meeting between the two parties, despite an optimistic start from the man who would eventually fail in what he set out to do today. I'm hopeful we can conduct ourselves in a business-like fashion, uh, that we can search for some common ground and see if we can't find some, some answers to the problems. The company and union would go their separate ways after meeting for only 40 minutes. Wells and his team of mediators talking to one side, then the other. Still not an inch of progress toward resolving the unfair labor practice issues that brought everyone here. And by late afternoon, CAT officials announced they're leaving town. As we dealt with the issues of, uh, as the UAW calls them, unfair labor practice, there just didn't seem to be any flexibility on the union's part to allow us to go anyplace. They did not come here try to reach a resolution to the issues that are before us. They came here to see what kind of a public relations spin they can put on it. The company refused to yield to the UAW ultimatum to reinstate more than a dozen discharged workers. Throughout this long labor fight, UAW leaders have talked about what they call the repressive conditions inside the factory for their workers. Well, starting tomorrow night, the conditions outside the plants could become much worse for the more than 14,000 UAW members. Reporting from Indianapolis, Rusty Dunn, Channel 3 News. Union workers at the Decatur plant say as of the moment they will stick to tomorrow night's strike deadline, but there are reports that about 100 workers at one Peoria area plant have already walked out. A preliminary hearing has been set for next week for O.J. Simpson. Simpson today was arraigned in a Los Angeles court. He pleaded not guilty to charges he killed his ex-wife and her friend. Meanwhile, in Chicago today, police resumed their search for evidence in the vacant field near the O'Hare Plaza Hotel. Simpson stayed at that hotel the night of the murders. Chicago police say they're looking for a murder weapon and clothing. Officers did find a gym bag in Simpson's room, but aren't sure if the contents belong to the former Hall of Famer. We have more on the case and today's arraignment from Manuel Gallegos of CBS. At this time, do you wish to enter a plea guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. In a week's time, O.J. Simpson has gone from athletic hero and popular pitchman to mourner, to fugitive from the law, to suicidal murder suspect. He continues to insist he is innocent of the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. His attorney pressed for a rapid preliminary hearing. For the first time, the American public can see from the witness stand people under oath testifying publicly in a court of law as to what the true facts and evidence is in this case. Time magazine reports that Nicole Simpson's head was nearly decapitated and Ronald Goldman had 22 stab wounds. I think that with all of the questions we've been getting about the public sympathy, sympathy for Mr. Simpson, we should not forget the fact that we have two victims who were brutally slain. Though prosecutors say they already have enough evidence to convict, they still do not have a murder weapon. Los Angeles police resumed a search of a vacant lot near the Chicago hotel where Simpson spent time in the early morning after the murders. Police found a gym bag, sunglasses, and socks, but were unsure if any of those were related to the crime. Meanwhile, Simpson remains in his isolated cell under a suicide watch. Manuel Gallegos, CBS News, Los Angeles. Simpson's lawyer says he'll consider all possible defenses in the case and added the summary of the police blood analysis was inconclusive. The Los Angeles Police Department is denying that O.J. Simpson received any preferential treatment. That topic was the center of attention today at a gathering of police officials in Washington. Jim Stewart of CBS News reports. O.J., are you a suspect? 
In fact, O.J. Simpson from the start was the prime suspect in the murder of his wife and a friend last week. And from the start, there have been questions over whether he got special treatment. At a gathering of police officials in Washington today, the handling of the Simpson case was all the talk. It is a common practice uh, to arrange uh, people to turn themselves in for uh, different kinds of crimes. It's done all the time. Even murder? Even murder. But what is not common practice, many police insist privately, is to let the only suspect in a double unsolved homicide simply disappear from sight. After being initially handcuffed and then released, Simpson was rarely seen again. And after his wife's funeral, a look-alike threw the press and police completely off his trail. Just to be on the safe side, I think in the future, uh, individuals uh, who are afforded similar types of treatment, uh, and I suspect there won't be very many of them, but if they are, then they'll be kept under direct surveillance by a law enforcement agency. Los Angeles police concede that because of Simpson's notoriety and because they knew his attorney, they didn't feel the need for a tail. And what essentially transpired, many cops now agree, is that the Los Angeles police tried to give O.J. Simpson a break and almost got burned for it. Jim Stewart, CBS News, Washington. In other news tonight, the door is now open for an Urbana motel to be torn down, making way for a bigger auto dealership. The Urbana City Council tonight voted unanimously to help Larry Shelby expand his business into the property occupied by the Charterhouse Inn. The city will pay $150,000 for demolition once the motel's ownership is turned over to Shelby. Shelby told reporters, including Channel 3's Jennifer Roscoe, it's a positive move for everyone. We've been months and months trying to align all of the actions that must occur in this entire process, and tonight was a major hurdle to get over. I can't think of a better way to uh, develop that corner, to redevelop that corner, than to have uh, uh, business like Shelby's in Urbana uh, expand into that space. The Charterhouse Inn has been the site of a lot of criminal activity in the past. Last July, a night clerk there was raped and killed. Danville police have one suspect in custody and are searching for gunmen in a weekend shootout that left one man dead. Stephon's Murray turned himself in to police yesterday. He's been charged with armed violence and aggravated discharge of a firearm in connection with the shooting death of Michael Foreman early Sunday morning. Police say at least two more gunmen may have been involved and possible gang involvement is also being investigated. The victim in this case was known to be or purported to be affiliated with a group, uh, but to say that the motive on this particular case was a direct result of such, we do not have that as information. Danville police put extra patrols on the street last night to head off any possible retaliation, but have cut back to regular patrols with this initial arrest. Authorities in Spokane, Washington, say a gunman and two of his victims are dead after he opened fire in a military base hospital. Authorities in Spokane say the gunman was armed with an AK-47 assault rifle when he entered the Fairchild Air Force Base Hospital. The man killed two people inside and left 19 wounded. Seven are in critical condition. A military police officer later shot the man outside the hospital. Come hospital on. officials say among the wounded, a three-year-old boy and a five-year-old girl. There's no word yet on a motive behind those shootings. When we come back, the weather check. Also coming up, a 60 Minutes report raises new questions about whether you can get AIDS from a dentist. Dear Midas customers, nobody has a better choice of guaranteed mufflers to fit your car or your budget. And since we do most cars in under an hour, we even fit your schedule. That's the Midas way, the way it should be. The sun is rising on a remarkable sales event. The Jeep and Eagle Dawn to Dusk Sale. Get up to $1,200 in values when you buy or lease a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Or save when you buy or lease a new Eagle Vision. Get over $1,100 in option package values on Jeep Cherokee Sport. Or save $300 on Jeep Wrangler. So hurry, get to your Jeep and Eagle dealer before the sun sets on this remarkable sale. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Look to Champaign County Tenant Awning when planning your special event. See them for wedding receptions, graduations, parties, golf or tennis tournaments, or any prestigious event. All their rental tents are made to the highest industry standards for safety. Champaign County Tenant Awning is the award-winning company with the experience, equipment, and service to make your event a success. Come enter the festive world of tents. Let Champaign County Tenant Awning make your next event tentational. Their tents cover central Illinois. 
Whoever thought that driving the most fuel-efficient V8 luxury sedan in America would be so easy? Well, for a limited time, you can lease the 1994 Lincoln Town Car for just $4.29 a month for 24 months. At a price this easy, plus features like standard dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, and all the room, ride, and comfort you deserve, we suggest the time to see your Lincoln Mercury dealer is now. Just $4.29 a month for 24 months. Now that's easy, but it's only for a limited time and only at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. Dear parents, we don't want your family riding around on bad brakes. That's why we'll fix the brakes on most cars the same day you bring it in. Hey, Judy's here on a sultry evening. It is. You know, last night, yesterday, when that we had that little rain, you were mm -hmm. going outside, and it didn't feel any different. Worse season. And it's still very warm and sultry a tonight. Steamy. A little steamy. So those that did get some thunderstorms, it probably still feels very tropical out there. And there still are a few renegade thunderstorms about, and we'll continue that way, low around 72 degrees. Tomorrow, well, those thunderstorms may still be around or redevelop in the morning as a cold front moves in our direction. 76 degrees at 7 o'clock. The big question is, will we cool off? Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> we'll get back. Maybe. A 60 Minutes report is raising questions whether Kimberly Bergalis and five other people contracted AIDS from their dentist. Last night's report suggested all six patients may have gotten the disease through sex instead. Dr. Steve Greenberg has more. Uh, deep shock. I, I couldn't believe that uh, this had happened. At that first news conference four years ago, Kimberly Bergalis told the world she got the AIDS virus from her dentist, Dr. David Acker. The Centers for Disease Control analyzed the AIDS virus in Bergalis and in five other infected patients and concluded that Dr. David Acker infected at least six of his dental patients. That was the end of the story, until now. 60 Minutes with magazine reporter Stephen Barr has learned that Kimberly Bergalis and the other infected patients may have each have had a sexual history which could have put them at risk. Kimberly claimed to be a virgin. Reporter Stephen Barr questions her credibility. 60 Minutes also talked with Dr. Lionel Resnick, a private genetic researcher who at one time worked for Acker's insurance company. Resnick reviewed the CDC's analysis of blood samples taken from Bergalis, Acker, and the rest. Dr. Resnick told me and 60 Minutes he has some serious problems with the CDC's conclusion. Now, Dr. Resnick makes the point that human DNA is very stable. That's why we can do paternity testing with 99.9% .9 accuracy. But viral DNA is very unstable. It's constantly changing, and that's the problem. But after these latest revelations, some are now wondering if Dr. Acker is the victim. In Miami, I'm Dr. Steve Greenberg for CBS News. The American teenager who was flogged in Singapore is enjoying his freedom again. Michael Fay has been freed from the prison where he was lashed with a cane. He was lashed four times on May the 5th as part of his sentence for vandalism. The original sentence had been six strokes but was reduced after an appeal by President Clinton. Family members say Fay will return to his hometown in Ohio on Wednesday. An area library is heavily damaged by fire. That story when we come back, but first, look at tonight's winning lottery numbers. The Pontiac Bonneville and Lexus GS300 have all the things you expect in a luxury sedan. Both have anti-lock brakes and dual airbags. Both have a powerful V6 engine and power windows and locks. Just what you'd expect. But what you may not have expected is that a Lexus costs $18,000 more than the Bonneville. The Pontiac Bonneville. It'll meet all your expectations. Now, Bonneville's an even greater value with $1,500 cash back or 4.8% financing at your local Pontiac dealer. Once upon a time, Cindy Lou had to choose a health plan for herself and her family. The first plan seemed too big. Cindy was afraid that no one would care about her. The second plan was too small. Her choices were limited, and that made her nervous. Then she found personal care, large enough to handle her needs and still able to provide the personal service that makes a difference. 
It was just right. So Cindy Lou chose Personal Care and lived happily ever after. Personal Care, health plans that fit. Dear McDonald's, today I was overcome by joy when I saw your sign for a 99-cent double cheeseburger sandwich. I have always been a big fan of the double cheeseburger, but often thought of it as a luxury, sort of like power windows and door locks. But now it is just 99 cents. Sheer brilliance. I also noticed it is for a limited time. Very smart, because surely everyone will want 99-cent double cheeseburgers, and if you kept selling them like this, you would probably run out of hamburger buns, and then what would you do? What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. It may not look busy, but this Dodge Intrepid is processing two million pieces of information per second. Its remarkable computer network constantly analyzes data that helps it choose shift points, optimize fuel economy, even maintain the inside temperature you want. Just think, with five seconds left in this commercial, Intrepid still has about 10 million things to do. Dodge Intrepid. This changes everything. Tonight, Terry Gars on The Late Show and via satellite from Houston, Mujibur and Sarah Jewell. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's show is completely recyclable. Fire has closed the Urbana Free Library indefinitely. Fire officials say a fire broke out about 1.30 this afternoon in the electrical service room. A power line leading into the building shorted out, causing the fire. The flames were contained within the electrical service room, but smoke spread throughout the entire building. Everyone inside was evacuated safely and there were no injuries. The library's director says if the electrical room has to be rebuilt, it will be a while before the library opens. Now, if you've checked out a book, video, or any other materials, the library asks that you just hold on to them until the building is reopened. And with the help of residents and donations, one central Illinois town will be getting a new fire museum and veteran memorial. Thomasboro Fire Department officials and residents today took part in the groundbreaking ceremonies for that new building. The 22 by 34 foot building will be built entirely with volunteer labor and donated materials. Thomasboro Fire Chief Robert Morphy told Channel 3's Janet Erdman about the idea for the museum came about. Probably over the next three years. We need a place for the old 24 International, which we're out of room on the new station for our new equipment we'll be buying. We needed to, to preserve and keep the old International, and it was taking up room in the present station for just setting. So this is really the reason. The building committee is hoping to raise $15,000 for that new museum and memorial. So far, $5,500 has been raised. And coming up, baseball highlights, but also Wimbledon. Day one, and uh, they got a lot what we needed. Cool, cloudy conditions. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Maybe a little bit later. Wimbledon highlights along with the White Sox and the Cardinals, and the Open is decided in a playoff. First, a look at today's World Cup scores. If you're looking at a mid-size Toyota Camry, then you should see this. The Pontiac Bonneville has air, anti-lock brakes, dual airbags, V6, and power windows, all for $1,500 less than the smaller Camry. Plus, you can get $1,500 cash back or low 4.8% financing on Bonneville. Now there's something to look at. So take another look at Pontiac, and you'll see why we're outselling all the imports. Now get $1,500 cash back or 4.8% financing on Bonneville at your local Pontiac dealer. Presenting Best Buy's shelves. These rugged shelves support the products at Best Buy. Note how they hold all the inventory, showing there's no back room. It's all right here. How they hold loads of products at your fingertips, inviting. Grab all you want. Plus changeable price tags, which point out we're not perfect, but our prices are close. Like this AM-FM stereo cassette deck for just $26.74. So whatever these shelves mean, remember one thing. Without them, Best Buy would just be cheap. started making decisions together. When you drive out of our way to save five dollars on an oil change, I understand. When you'd rather decorate with what we laughingly call heirlooms, 
I understand. When you plan our night out by the coupons you've clipped, I understand. But if you want our engagement and wedding rings to come from anyone but M.J. Reed Jewelers and Art Carved, I don't understand. That's why we'll make the decision together from Art Carved. M.J. Reed Jewelers, Old Farm Shop, Champagne. Automobile Magazine looked at these remarkable cars and promptly declared Chrysler the hottest car company in America. The heat continues with Chrysler Plymouth's hottest clearance. Get up to $1,000 in option package values on Plymouth Voyager and Grand Voyager. Plus cash back and option discounts of up to $1,063. Even save on the luxurious town and country. Chrysler Plymouth's hottest clearance from America's hottest car dealers. It's only June. Your White Sox have got time. A little worried, though. They're not playing good baseball, and I don't like the manager. Never have, never will. I want Tony La Russa back. Plenty of time, Lars. <laughs> You're not going to comment on that. Chicago Southsiders stopped the bleeding yesterday, but now the Sox find themselves five games back of Cleveland in the AL Central. And it's been a long time since they've been that far behind. With Texas in town tonight, the Rangers scored with the long ball. Ivan Rodriguez, then the Cuban strongman, Jose Canseco, crashing one out off Jack McDowell. But the That's White amazing. Sox struck in the sixth and he the seventh. It. Darren Jackson face it right up the middle of plates. Julio Franco, Chicago now clinging, hanging on for dear life, up six to five. The game is in the eighth. Elsewhere, Cleveland has defeated Detroit. Sox can gain no ground. Yankees dumped Minnesota with Milwaukee over Baltimore. Boston ends an 11-game losing streak, defeating Toronto, while Seattle leads the Halos. To Bush Stadium, where the Expos open a set with the Cardinals, Montreal took the lead when Wilfredo Cordero single draws the throw from Bernard Gilkey. Watch closely. It will get away from Tom Pagnazzi. Larry Walker scores. Pags then decides to go to second to try to get Cordero. Too late there. Then Darren Fletcher, the Oakwood native, former Illini, breaks for the plate, beats the throw, Expos on top. But Mark Witten would silence the Boo Birds for the Redbirds with one swing of the bat, a cannon shot. Looked good for a while, but Montreal has just knocked off two solo home runs in the seventh. They lead St. Louis 5-4. It's in the seventh inning of play. Elsewhere in the National League, Rain claimed the Pirate Philly contest. Atlanta back on the winning track. Houston leads the Rockies. Padres over the Dodgers, both in the third innings of play. Well, Illinois' all-time leading scorer is bearing down on his basketball future. Deion Thomas will find out a week from Wednesday which NBA team wants him enough to draft him on June 29th. And today and tomorrow, Thomas is in Orlando, where the Magic will work him out. Then he'll head to Atlanta to ply his wares for the Atlanta Hawks. The Londoners enjoyed what we'd like a little bit of, cool, cloudy conditions on opening day at Wimbledon. And the packed house saw five former champions cruise in their opening matches. Stefan Edberg, Boris Becker, and Andre Agassi right there were victorious. Meantime, defending champion Pete Sampras survived a stiff test from fellow American Jared Palmer in the ceremonial opener on historic center court. Sampras wailed away, putting 25 aces past the former Stanford star, closing out Palmer 7-6. 7-5 and 6-3. And on the ladies' side, 37-year-old Martina Navratilova in the far court began her Wimbledon farewell with a victory, whipping Brit Claire Taylor 6-2, 6-3. The nine-time Wimbledon champion says she hoped to go out with a bang at her all-time favorite tournament. And after top ten finishes in five major golf tournaments the past two years, South African Ernie Els has realized a dream. The 24-year-old recovered from a poor start to claim the U.S. Open Championship at Oakmont. Ells, Scotland's Cullen Montgomery, and American Lauren Roberts teed it up in a shaky 18-hole playoff. It was rough, first nine all the way around. Ells searching wildly in vain for his ball in the bushes, and Montgomery never was a factor. Five out of the turn. Ells and Roberts were tied at 18 when Lauren sinks the par putt to stay at three over. Well, Ells had to match it to go to sudden death, and he does it. Then on the second hole, Robert struggled in the rough, off the tee, and his approach was short and in the bunker. One last chance. But his par saver would hit the cup and stay out, just hit it a little too firmly. It's up to Els then to sink the putt for the victory, and he would do it, claiming the United States Open title. Is the new champion. Last three days, the putter got me to where I was today. Let me down a little bit today until the last couple of holes, but at least I was able to get a couple in there at the end to, to for, force Ernie to make some. 
you know, I've always wanted to win a major. I've always wanted to win any of the four majors, and uh, it's come pretty early for me. Um, hopefully, I'll be ready for it. I'll have to take some time off and really think about it all. Um, but I just, I don't think it's going to change me as a person. He is a cool customer. Ellis is the first foreigner in 13 years to win the Open. I think we're going to hear a lot from Ernie Ellis in the near future. All right. Lots of money, yep. right? Yep, you got it. Okay, hopefully Judy can cool things off next. Let's compare the value-priced Buick Century to Ford Taurus GL. Century comes standard with anti-lock brakes. They cost hundreds extra on Taurus. Century includes power windows, locks, and cruise control standard. Taurus does not. Best of all, Century costs around $5,000 less. In fact, at $14,995, it's ranked the best overall value in its class. So test drive Century at your better Buick dealer and see why it beats Taurus any way you slice it. We are Big R. We are Big R. We are Big R. Now that you've spent time building that new deck, protect it with Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer. You'll find Thompson's the perfect complement for natural wood grain or stained decking. Thompson's goes on easily and dries fast. Outdoor wood projects are complete when they're finished with Thompson's Water Seal. We are King Bar! Look to Champaign County Tenant Awning when planning your special event. See them for wedding receptions, graduations, parties, golf or tennis tournaments, or any prestigious event. All their rental tents are made to the highest industry standards for safety. Champaign County Tenant Awning is the award-winning company with the experience, equipment, and service to make your event a success. Come enter the festive world of tents. Let Champaign County Tenant Awning make your next event tentsational. Their tents cover central Illinois. It's about our children, our parents, our lovers, our friends. It could happen to anybody. It's about black and white, gay and straight, male and female, old and young. It's only whatever happens, don't cry. Don't cry. It's about opening our hearts, opening our eyes. So this is about all of us. Why we can't close our eyes to the faces of AIDS. Next, Oprah. Tuesday at 4, here on Channel 3. Ford Probe GT has been called the most cost-effective rocket coupe. The best value in the hot sports coupe class. And the affordable master of multifunctional fun. Ford Probe GT, the most award-winning sports coupe in its class, is now even more affordable. With 2.9% APR or special low lease terms, Ford Probe, an affordable front-wheel drive sports coupe. What a concept. A little rain would be nice. A little rain would be nice and a little cooler. Just just a little bit would mm -hmm. be very nice. Tomorrow is the first day of summer. Did you know that? Well, I imagine it'll be hot then. <laughs> we may even get warmer than we have. Let's take a look at those temperatures tonight. It is continuing to be quite warm out there. We seem to be caught in a quagmire of heat and humidity with very little signs of breaking down. We may have lesser amounts of humidity, which should help somewhat, but the temperatures will still stay up there. These are the current conditions still in the mid-80s under a lot of haze. In Flatville, Sharon Hovland reporting 82 degrees. She says she manages to see a few stars even through the haze. Well, we did have a scattering of thunderstorms throughout the area earlier this evening. As a matter of fact, there was a severe thunderstorm watch for the northern uh, most sections of Illinois, including McLean and Livingston. That uh, expired. Uh, actually, they took it out before it expired at around 8 o'clock this evening. Still have some thunderstorms in the northern part of the state earlier this evening. Some of those storms did manage to produce some hail and some lightning strikes. Uh, a couple of people were affected by that. We'll go to our Springfield radar and show you the same picture. And you'll notice right along here in Cass and Menard County, there were some pretty good storms that produced pea-sized hail and intense lightning and heavy rains. And even though they have diminished uh, considerably, they're still out there and very likely could pop up somewhere else. And that's why we continue with it in our forecast. Our satellite showing the earlier today, showing most of the activity to the north of Illinois. And watch what happens. You can almost tell by late afternoon when all of these uh, popcorn thunderstorms pop up. Uh, and there you have it. And there's another batch. As we put it into motion, they seem to diminish. But a couple more cells broke out tonight or are continuing to break out. 
and still more activity to the west, and that's right along that front, which we wish would move through for a little bit. Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, uh, two inches measured. In Ohio, four inches of rain. And lightning strikes, as we said, in, Chicago, in Illinois, and also in Florida, all three of those uh, affecting people. Uh, the frontal system sprawled, meanders from the east coast to the west coast. Ozone alert, the pollution is so bad in portions of Texas and Oklahoma that the breathing is almost impossible. Lots of uh, pollutants trapped in the atmosphere. Carbondale took the hot spot today. The heat index, the highest in the nation at 120. So we look at a uh, beautiful moon there. We show you the statistics, 73 to 93, the range of temperatures today compared to an average of 62 to 83 makes the seventh straight day in a row we've had temperatures above 90. 29 and 96 hundredths for the barometer, 72 percent humidity. Winds from the west at three, that was, that's the soil temperature, the four natives level, pollen count at eight. Precipitation champion Urbana, 22 hundredths of an inch, 85 hundredths now for the month of June, and we'll be back after this. You probably expect a car that's big on standard features, big on power, big on safety, room, and comfort, to also come with a big price. Not Mercury Grand Marquis, because now, at a low lease price of just $2.99 a month, price isn't Grand Marquis' biggest feature, it's the best feature. Oh, better hurry, because at just $2.99 a month, supplies are getting smaller. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer now. At Roger Huddleston Homes, affordable housing doesn't mean a cheap home. There's two things that are really important about that particular item. One is the fact that I'm proud to put my name on each and every home that goes out. But more importantly, my customers are proud to own that home because it's a home that's got the things they need in them, built in a quality atmosphere, built just for them. Affordable, quality homes. Roger Huddleston Manufactured Homes. Roger Huddleston Manufactured Homes, Muhammad. Some people say it costs too much to build an environmentally better building. The people of Lawrence, Kansas proved them wrong. This is our Walmart store here. Recycled asphalt parking lots, solar-powered signs, skylights for natural light to save electricity, and many other improvements you can't even see. We're proud of this store because we were a test, and much of what we learned will go into future stores. The test was a wonderful success, and the real winner is the world around us. The sun is rising on a remarkable sales event. The Jeep and Eagle Dawn to Dusk Sale. Save up to $1,200 when you buy or lease a Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. Or save when you buy or lease a new Eagle Vision. Save over $1,100 in option package savings on Jeep Cherokee Sport. Or save $300 on Jeep Wrangler. So hurry, get to your Jeep and Eagle dealer before the sun sets on this remarkable sale. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Well, tomorrow is the longest day of the year, the first official day of summer. It begins at 9.48 tomorrow morning. On we go to our forecast for tonight, which continues to include isolated thunderstorms, then a chance of more thunderstorms developing towards morning, warm and humid. 73 I'm going for, winds light and variable. Tomorrow, 40% chance of lingering morning thunderstorms, hot but less humid, 88 to 93 is a possible high. Southwesterly winds 10 to 15, shifting to the north. 524, 825 for sunrise and sunset. Tomorrow night, looking good. I like those 60s. Cooler, fair skies. Thursday, we're looking at a day with a uh, temperature near 90. Maybe we won't hit 90. Wouldn't that be nice? 94 on Thursday with thunderstorms. Friday and Saturday still warm, but less humid. After so all, it is summer. It is summer. All right. Okay. Maybe David Letterman will cool us off. Maybe. That's our report. We'll see you tomorrow. David Letterman is next. Good night.